so people may still be thinking through the room. Um, this is English 301, as you can see. Um, I am Miss Penny, and this class meets from 10 to, basically from 10 to 12. It's a two-hour class. We do have a um, break in the middle, and then I let you out at Penfield so that if you have a class at noon, you will get to the next class. Um, what we're going to do today is um, an introduction to the class, which is what this green sheet is. We're going to go over this and talk about what we're going to do in the class. And then I'm going to have you um, do a piece of writing for me. Do a little writing assignment. Um, I am, but depending on how many people are really here, we don't have enough seats. Um, in the next week or so, depending on if people go on for that, I, I think I'm going to have the people in that back row by the door move up because that's just that's too far away. I, I'm going to have to put these people move up here. Um, I'm kind of going to not use that chat here. And you don't have to do it right now because. I think you miswrote the days of the week, 10 to 11.50 oh. on Mondays and Wednesdays. Okay. We're in class Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm still back on, I'm still back on Good, you'll have to catch me with these people. I have two classes in here on Monday and Wednesday, so I was still back on that. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, so um, we're going to, and if you notice, I also made a mistake up here. I wrote spring 3015. My secretary said, oh, you moved forward a thousand years. So I corrected that. Okay, so and I'm also dealing with these lights. These are different. And people who have had them before know how much trouble I had with those lights in the other room. Okay, this green sheet, I know that some of you have heard this lecture before, but I, I see a lot of new faces, so I know some people haven't. Um, this green sheet, which at NBC we actually call a green sheet. Um, the, the secretary will email me and say, you haven't given me your green sheets yet. This is a really important document in college classrooms. Um, the teacher is required to give it to you, hopefully sometimes during the first week, although you wouldn't um, believe how many semesters I've had where the, the teachers are like, don't give this to the students. Um, basically, it's a contract. It gives the rules of the class, and I have to stick to them, and you have to stick to them. So if you are in a class where a teacher doesn't give you something like this within the first week, say something. Say something to the teacher. Say, you can say, if you haven't given me your green sheet, they'll know what that means. That's what we call it here. Or say, you haven't told me what the grading policy is in this class. You haven't told me how to get in touch with you. You haven't told me what we're going to do in the class and that's expected that because by law we're required to give this to you. So it's, you know, it's, yes it's a handout and then it's like, oh, this is just another handout the teacher is giving to me, but you need to hold on to it and you need to abide by it. You need to do what it says. And so do I. I, I have, you know, you can't, I can't come to you the last week of the semester and say, oh, by the way, I've decided that if you're going to, Class, you have to write another 10-page paper. 
I can't change what I have in here. And you can't come to me and say, well, I didn't know I had to do this in order to pass. Okay, because it's all going to be in here. Okay, so we're going to spend a little time going over it because um, there are some things um, that I want to point out. And uh, for pe again, for people who have had it before, a couple of changes that I've made. The first part here is how to get in touch with me. Okay, um, email is the best way. By the way, I did everybody get an email from me last week? You all should have. If you didn't, and that's another important thing about email, if you didn't get an email from me last week, it just said, welcome to 301, please get your books and all that stuff. It wasn't, if you didn't get it, it's the, the content of the email wasn't a problem. The problem is that one of the reasons I do that is because I'm using the address that you gave MPC okay, as your email address. So if you didn't get that email, you need to double check what email address you have on file with the Admissions and Records Office. Because that's how MPC is going to contact you if anything goes wrong or if they need to tell you something. So that's one of the reasons I send it. Um, I will, I'm never going to send an email, I will email students from time to time. I'm never going to send an email that says you have an assignment due that has not already been announced in class. So it's not like, you know, you have to be checking your email all the time to see if I've added an assignment. But I will, if I do need to communicate with you, I will do it by email, okay? MPC is a little slow on technology, so we're still working with email instead of text. Okay, if you need to email me, this is my email address, okay? You'll notice that it looks like that's another mistake. It looks like that E shouldn't be like that. But the reason I do that is because a lot of students email me and then come to class and say, but I sent you an email, I sent you my paper and an email, and I said, no, I didn't get it. And I always say, did you spell my name right? And they say, oh yes, I spelled your name right. And guess what, they're sending it to this address. They got most of it right. But I say, okay, show me on your phone who you sent it to, and sure enough, that's not going to get to me. And NBC doesn't have one of those cute little things that says, sorry, there's nobody by that name at this email. Okay, so double check, make sure that you have my name, you know, put it into your phone or whatever, so that you can be sure you're getting something. Okay, you can call me, if you call me, you can leave a message, um, I probably will email you in response rather than calling you. <coughs> Okay, the website is MPC Online. How many people have been on MPC Online for whatever reason? At some point in the line. Okay, in this class, I'm trying to experiment this year with 301. Um, this, is, this is not an online class, and of course, I you know I'm not going to do most of the stuff online, but they are encouraging us, the, the college is encouraging us to get more and more of the classroom stuff online. And I can require you to do it because the campus makes computers available to you. So even if you don't have a computer at home, which I know many students don't, you can use the ones in the English Center and the library, okay? Um, if you're in a reading class, if you're also taking 302, you can use the ones in the reading center also. So there are plenty of computers available. The one thing I am going to have you require that you do online this time is your journal. I'm going to have you actually keep your journal online. And my thought is that that's going to encourage people to do it. Okay. So we'll see how it works, and we'll show you how to do that when we get to that. Okay, so that's why it says here, some of the work in this class will be done on the website. I'm also going to attempt, and this is new to me, this 
said this maybe me too. Um, we went to a seminar this last week on how to do this. Um, I'm also going to put some of the assignments up there um, so that you can actually, if you want to complete them online, you can. Some of the homework assignments. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. The only thing I'm going to require that you do online is the journal. Okay. And we'll talk about that when we get to that. Okay. Um, like I said, class hours, and this is a you know something you need to know. I, I kind of give you this what I call college survival skills, along with the writing instruction. Um, it says 10 to 12 here and 10 to 11 to here. That means the same thing. That you guys are taking a four-unit class, which means you are spending four hours per week in the classroom. So this is a 10 to 12 class. It's a four-hour class. But, like I said, they require that we give you 10 minutes of break per hour. So this means exactly the same thing. You will get out, if, if you have a 10 to 12 class, you will get out at 10 till. If you have a 9 to 10 class, you will get out at 10 till. It starts at 9, you get out at 10 till. Okay, plus two hours lab time per week in the English language. When you registered, for class, was anyone surprised when you, you registered for 301 and then you went, you looked at your receipt and you were also registered in this class? Did that surprise anybody? Okay, what's this class? I didn't register for this. This is the lab. It's, we have, it's a separate class, it's zero units, it doesn't cost you anything, but it's our way of keeping track of whether you're doing it. So there is some extra time required on campus. This is the time, again, this is one of the reasons I can require you to do the journal. Because you have to go there, even if you're thinking, I don't want to just see the computer stand there. You're going to have to go down there for the lab anyway. And what very often happens in this class is that people get through with the lab work before they've spent two hours. Some people take longer, some people take less. Um, so while you're down there, you can put in some of those two hours to read your journal. So it's a good way to get everyone prepared to go down there, sit there, do the lab work, do your journal, do your homework while you're sitting down there, and you're done. You don't have to take any of that stuff home. Okay? So um, the thing about this is, though, so I do sometimes have students come up and say to me, well, I didn't, when I signed up for this class, I didn't realize there were going to be extra hours and I have to work and I can't do that. In that case, you're either going to have to adjust your work schedule or take the class another time. These other two hours are up to you. You can do it any time. It's not a, you know, you don't have to be down there from 8 to 10 on Tuesday, Thursday. Does that make sense? So you can schedule them pretty much. And we'll talk about that. We're gonna, I think we're going to go down there on on uh, Thursday. And by the way, as you can see, if I say, because like I say, I have my Monday, Wednesday classes in the same room. If I say we're going to do this on Wednesday, what I mean is we're going to do it the second day of class this week. So you have to kind of help me remember what day it is. Okay. Okay. Um, my office is in HSS 107. Where is that? What's HSS? This is HU. Yeah, it's that, that building. Okay, so it's my office is very easy to get to. You just go down those stairs and across the lawn in that door and to the right. Okay, it's very easy to find. My office hours are Monday, Wednesday, 9 to 10 and Tuesday, Thursday, right after this class. You will need to come to my office. Um, we're going to be writing a number of papers in here, and I encourage you to come to my office and or email me with drafts of your papers. Um, the title of this class is, as you can see up there, Introduction to Academic Writing. And this is a key word. 
And one of the things, if you don't take anything else away from this semester, what I want you to understand is that academic write, writing requires a process. There's a process involved, and that process includes drafts, revisions, and more revisions. After you leave this class, you will no longer think in terms of writing a college paper as sitting down the night before it's due and writing something and turning it in, okay? We're gonna work through that process. And because that process includes review, I'm gonna help you with it, and you need to take advantage of that. If you, if you continue with that model, if you go on through the end of the semester with the attitude that, okay, you know, she assigns this paper two weeks in advance, but it's not due till February X, so I really don't have to worry about this until the day before. You have to do the graphs. The graphs are going to be great, and you have to get the Okay? So that's why you need to know where my office is, when I'm there, and what my email address is. I'm perfectly happy to do email reviews. Okay? I'm even going to try, that's another thing I'm going to try online, because I think it's going to be easier for both of us. Um, I can put the assignment up there. It, it's a really neat thing. They showed all this to us in the seminar. And, you know, I'm not a big computer person, but this looks really good to me. The assignment's there, and it's actually set up so that it's not just a file. You can get in there and actually type or cut and paste your draft in there. If that stays up there, and I can get in there and make comments on it, change it and I can say yes that's good no you need to do something else and we can just work back and forth right on the NPC online okay then it has a due date okay so after that date you can't work on the you have to turn it in so that I think that's going to be really helpful okay all right so we'll and we'll see how that works you guys have to kind of help me with that okay any questions about how to find That's one of the things we're required to tell you. Okay, the textbook is this. Um, what I am, you know, again, kind of a change for people who've had me before. Um, as we all know, or if you have, don't know, you'll soon find out textbooks are ridiculously expensive. This book is like $140 or something. Do not ask me why this much paper should cost $140. Okay. Um, however, the way it is right now with the technology and the publishers and the colleges, we haven't come up with an ideal way to make these affordable. Okay. So what I'm saying is you should, ideally you should have a copy of the book, but it can, if you want to buy the, I know it says on the bookstore, if you look on the bookstore, my, my default is do not buy the ebook, but actually I'm going to change that. If you want to get the ebook, that's fine. That's not cheap either. But, you know, it's not like that's nothing. Um, you can rent it. They have several options in the bookstore. If you go on the bookstore website, they have several options of, of how to get hold of the book. Or you can choose to rely on the book that is on reserve in the library. What does that mean when a teacher puts a book on reserve at the library? Does anyone have that before? You can like, get it for two hours. Exactly. If it's there in the library, you can check it out, but you can't take it out. You can't take it away from the library. You can look at it for two hours. What a lot of students do, because this, this book is going to be used mostly for homework, we will look at it in class, but don't worry about lugging it with you to class because if we do use it in class, I will, you will have done homework in here before and I will just put it up here and look at what it says. Okay, but you should have read it for homework. Okay, so if you don't have one, you need, what it says here, you need to have regular access to it. 
Now that could mean deciding to, if you have a friend in the class, deciding to share a book, either digital or hard copy. You can decide to rely on this one in the library. There is only one. I have to buy it and put it down there. The library doesn't supply it. Um, there, I, there may be some in the English Center. I don't know. There may be a couple of copies of this in the English Center. But in other words, you don't absolutely have to buy the book, but you do have to have a great book access to it. Okay? Um, we have a homework assignment in it. That's one of the things I said in that email I sent, that you needed, and that's true of most college classes. You are responsible for getting the books before class starts. Okay, um, the other things you will need, we will be doing some work in class. You'll need to bring a pen because I don't accept work in pencil. Um, if you choose to do homework in handwriting, which you can, um, you need to do it in pen. You can also type it. Like I said, I'm going to put some of the see about putting some of that stuff up online, and you could conceivably do some of it right on the computer and then turn it in online. Um, you need a staple and uh, staples and a stapler. Okay, that's just a bottom line rule for any college writing class are going to have to turn some paper stuff in. And if you turn it in, if you have more than one page of an assignment and you turn it in without it being stapled, it's going to get lost. So you need to have a stapler. I don't have one up here. This isn't my classroom. This is just where we hold this class. So the only stuff I have, I bring with me. And I don't carry a stapler around. Okay, and you'll need to have a binder. You need to have to take notes and do all that good kind of stuff. Okay? And you do need, like I say, regular access to a computer, which you all have because you all are students here and you can all use the library and ESSC computers. Okay. Now, um, everybody knows that this is a pass no pass class. Yes, this is one of our what we call our sequence classes, leading up to the letter grade classes. So every, you don't have a choice. Everything's pass, no pass. Um, student learning outcomes. I like to talk about these a little bit before we get started because one of the things I do is come back to these throughout the semester and figure out whether we have hit them or not. The state of California is changing things. Um, Day by day, we keep getting these inputs. Now we're going to do it this way. And one of the things that they've changed is we can no longer just give you a list of stuff that we're going to do in the class. Okay, here's what this class will cover. It's going to cover the process of writing. It's going to cover writing for this specific purpose, which may be different from a lot of the writing you've done before, personal writing or creative writing. And we'll talk about what that means. Um, but we also have to say, not only here's what we're going to cover, but here is what students will be able to do before they can pass this class. That's what they're asking us to say. So this is a list of things you will be able to do when you leave this class. Okay? You will be able to develop a thesis and use rhetorical strategies in the writing of coherent paragraphs and essays. Okay, I mean, you're thinking, what does that mean? How can I do it if I don't even know what it means? We'll, we'll sort that out. And this is where I was talking about the drafting and revising. Practice successful planning, process, study, and preparation skills for the completion of college level reading and writing assignments. Okay, that's what I was talking about before and write clear, effective sentences which demonstrate con control of grammar, diction, and technical conventions. A lot of that's going to be in the lab. Basically, that's the grammar lessons, but we're also going to do grammar in here. I have a whole set of grammar lessons that cover stuff that the lab does not. 
pay. And by the way, if you've taken 301 before or had a friend or something that took it, you'll notice this is the only book. There's no lab book. Last semester, you had to get another new lab book. This time, they've changed that. So if you have that lab book from before, you can toss it. Um, you just, they do it all on, all on the computer down there, and you don't need the book. I don't know exactly what they're doing down there, but they have given me a list of very general topics that they're going to cover. So mine are going to be a little bit different. Okay, so we'll come back to these throughout the class, and I'll say to you, do you think you understand this and you can do it now? And you will say, yes, you understand what that means. Okay, it's not going to take us that long to go through the rest because we're not going to go piece by piece. Um, this is just the basic, again, college expectations. You need to be here. Um, you need to be on time. Um, you need to take notes. We'll talk about taking notes, um, what you need to be writing down. Um, you need to turn in assignments on time. I don't accept late work and I'm tough on attendance. Okay? Um, you need to pay attention to what's going on. Okay. Last semester I tried an experiment with cell phones. I decided to give, put everybody on an honor system and say, you know, if you guys want to talk on a cell deal with a cell phone while you're here, you paid to come take this class. If it's your choice to sit there and text through the whole thing and not pay attention, it's your money, okay? But I found out that didn't work. It was, it was an experiment that failed. So I have now gone back to my other method, which is called the basket. If I see a cell phone, I will come and collect it, okay? If you have a cell phone, I will come and collect it, okay? Um, you need to yeah, you need to do this. You're paying money for this class, you need to get your money's worth out of it. Or somebody's paying money for you to take this class. Okay, um, and I, I always say here you're welcome to go look for another section with an easier teacher if you think that my rules are too tough. I think you will find that most of the other English teachers here have pretty much the same rules as far as attendance, papers, and that kind of thing, okay? Okay, so absences, um, if you miss four class meetings, that's too much. I know that sounds a little tough at first, but if you think about it, this the semester lasts for 17 weeks. One of those weeks is the final exam, so we basically only have 16 weeks of class, minus the holidays. If you miss four class meetings in a two-day-a-week class, you've missed two weeks of class. And again, that's pretty much the standard for MPC. If you have a three-day-a-week class, you can miss six. So that's why four sounds a little bit tough. If you think about it, six class meetings in a three-day-a-week three -day class, but two class meetings in a two-day-a-week class. Okay? So it's pretty standard. Um, if you are absent, I realize that, that there are emergencies. I realize people get sick. You know, they can't get their car breaks down. If that happens, you need to email me as soon as possible. Let me know. You don't have to give me a whole detail. I had one guy a couple of semesters ago who had to have surgery on his wrist, and he sent me all these pictures of the surgery. I said, I don't need that kind of detail. Just, you had to have surgery and you couldn't be here today, okay? Um, but, you know, that's fine. Um, you need to look at the syllabus, which is another thing I'm going to give you, and that will tell you what you miss. And then, this is really important. If you are here on, if you weren't here on a day that homework is assigned, you cannot come to class the next time and say, well, I wasn't here, so I didn't know what the homework was. Look at the syllabus, find out what it is. This is where you need to go on MPC online. Even if you're not actually doing the homework online, you need to print it out if you're doing it by hand and do it and bring it with you to class. Because if you're here on the day it's due, it's due. If you don't have it, I don't accept it. Yet. Okay? So that's important. Okay? Uh oh. 
this is not good. If this thing goes out, that means the whole computer system is it Has it not been on? No, it's it was on when I came in. Okay. That, this, this is the thing about it. Our whole computer system in our office has been down since yesterday. Guess what? If you have to print anything, we can't do it. Um, so now this is out. This is a bad sign. MPC and technology, like I said, is not quite what it should be. They're getting there. Oh, okay. So that's why I have that clock, okay, which I do check every few days to make sure that that one, that old national one is running by the same, to the same thing. You need to be in your seat when you clock say in. If your cell phone for some reason is different, set them to these clocks. I have, we had a lot of trouble last semester about people who would come in they thought, oh, we're only five minutes late. Why are we marking these words? There has to be a cutoff point somewhere, and it's going to be at 10 o'clock. If you are not in your seat ready to work at 10, you're late. Okay, so it's a, you know, another lesson in the class. You need to be there. Okay, um, this class is for, cool. let's see. is here except one person. One person is missing. I know who it is. Um, and I think he's coming. Um, so this class is full. Is there anyone who is not on the roll and wanting to add? Okay, so it, here's the thing. We don't have a waiting list, but it, within the first week, it's possible that somebody does come on Wednesday. <coughs> Okay. If that happens, if somebody else comes and says, I want to add this class, and one of you does not show up on Wednesday and hasn't emailed me, I will drop you and add that person. So be careful about that. All you need to do if you get sick on Wednesday, just email me. Do you mean me Thursday? Know. Still want to be in the back. Do you mean Thursday? Sorry, Thursday. Thank you. <laughs> not Wednesday. going to keep me on track. <laughs> What's going on? She's always been good about that. Okay. Um, so, you know, and again, this kind of a caveat for the all, all of college. Okay. Um, I have a lot of students who don't come the first day, which is why I'm glad to see it right here. And then there's a bunch of people waiting, and I say, okay, no, nope, the person isn't here, so I'm going to drop them. And they come the second day and say, well, here I am. And I say, well, you know what? You, you have to be there. You have to be there the first day, or, or teachers will block you. Okay, but it looks like we're pretty much even in here. This will talk about when we get to these dates. Um, again, I don't accept late work. If you are absent, if you're not here on the day of something, you need to have it to by the next class meeting, okay? Um, so be aware of that. There's a lot of assignments in, in this class, and you can very quickly get behind. Um, I'm gonna experiment, in this class, this semester, you guys are my guinea pig. My other classes, I'm not doing it, but this is gonna be my guinea pig class. I'm gonna experiment with doing the grade book online. Um, we shall see how that works, but this is, yeah, uh, and on a lot of on these, any assignments that are up there, we'll look at the website just a minute. Um, there is a way you can check them all, and for the papers, because we are going to see how that works to review papers online, there's a cutoff date, which is, for me, is good. Um, I post the assignment, I say, I opened it on this date. It's due in two weeks. So at midnight on that date, you can't turn it in anymore if you don't have it. So there's no more question about, well, yeah, I almost have it done. I'm a part of it done. It's either done or it isn't. Okay? So that's going to help with that. The question of, is it a fun? Okay, this is the lab. We're going to go down there on Thursday and get. Um, get straightened out there. I will assign you a journal. I think that's next week. Okay, so here's the NPC online. Sounds like some of you already know how to get on here. 
Um, this is the MPC main page. It's way down here. I think there's some other ways you can get, but they, it's pretty good. They have up there pretty good things. It's set up so that now I've made this really big. Um, I learned a lot of stuff. I don't have a cell phone, but um, I don't get one. But I, but I learned a lot of stuff about cell phones. Okay. Um, you notice now you have these three columns, there's the boxes, but if, if you're on a smaller screen, which means that you know, looks like this, your cell phone will make it, um, puts it all in a line. So there's nothing out to the side, all that stuff goes down here, okay? So if, when you get it on your cell phone, it may not look exactly the same as this, but, and what they told us was, and this was interesting, that for a lot of students, which I didn't know, a lot of students, um, this is your computer. You know, this is what you use for your computer. So um, that helps to know what you're seeing. Okay, and it's very slow. All right, so when you get on here, you will see Miss Penny's English 301 class. So what comes up is all the classes you are enrolled in that are using this, okay? Um, as I said, they're encouraging all the classroom teachers to put something up here. Partly to say, paper. Um, I know that a couple of teachers in our department don't hand anything out. Does anyone have a class like that where the, a, a, an on campus class where the teacher is saying, I don't have any hand up, go to the website? Again, yeah, I know a couple of teachers in our division. It saves, saves trees. Okay, so you click on this, and then this is what's up here now. It's basically this and the other hand that we give you today. So if you lose this, you can go here and get it. And it's up there in something called a page. It's not a Word document, it's not a PDF file. It's something that they promised me will be readable on your cell phones. Okay, so it doesn't look exactly the same, but it is, I just cut and pasted it, it's all the same information. Okay, so it's all up there, same stuff. Okay, as the semester goes on, like on today, I'm going to go back in, in and post the other couple of things I'm So they will be up there. I do it after the class.